All right. Happy Thursday, everybody. For those of you who do not know, my name is Josh Pono. I am a director of uh, training at Ideal Estate. And uh, Sean and I have partnered up through some uh, connections. And it's our mission to provide a ton of value uh, that is uh, under the surface. You know, a lot of coaches, a lot of trainers, a lot of things, uh, content online, they talk about surface stuff. And there's this missing element inside of the real estate industry where you know, even when we go to these brokerages and we get our training and whatnot, it's the nitty gritty of actually executing into the prospecting areas that'll ultimately unlock some of the value that we're looking to deliver to the clients to ensure that we're selling more homes. Um, I currently run a real estate office in San Diego. I am still in production. Um, I am a sales development expert in the sense that uh, I am actively selling and working clients with my agents in real live training scenarios. I still am selling um, homes consistently through Cancel and Expires. I prospect every single morning at 8 a.m. I do internet leads. Uh, my three pillars in business, internet leads, Cancel and Expire listings, and of course, my sphere of influence. Those are the three pillars that I can rely on to consistently bring me business. And the stuff that we're going to talk about today is going to make all of that easier. The goal of prospecting, I don't know about you guys, but as much as as much fun as we can have with prospecting, as much as it's like this really exciting thing that we all absolutely love to do, uh, there's a ton of other things that we could be doing. And now the challenge is, is that prospecting is something that takes time to develop systems and to develop um, develop habits and routines. And it's also something that is not going to be learned overnight. So today, we are going to talk about the ability to take cold calls, whether it's an internet lead, a referral, a sphere of influence, a cancel and expired. We're going to take that cold call and we're going to instantly turn it into a warm call. Okay, This skill set has provided millions of dollars of income over my 15 year career. And I'll talk to you a little bit about that. The number one reason is where's my perspective coming from? Uh, that I want to share things that I've learned, uh, give you some of the shortcuts that I've gone through. And, you know, I started out in real estate 15 years ago uh, on a mission to build businesses. And I, I'm an entrepreneur at heart and real estate happens to be my vehicle. I worked at website companies for eight years. <laughs> Let's get John there for a second. So I built website companies uh, and worked at website companies that sold leads to real estate agents. For the first eight years of my career, I worked at a company called Z57 where we sold and I prospected all day, every day, eight hours a day to get appointments, to sell products, to hand them off to customer support. And if I didn't have appointments, I literally had to dial eight hours a day. And I've gotten, I've, I've been hung up on hundreds of uh, thousands of times in regards to, um, Working because agents, they don't want to hear from lead gen people, right? Uh, I worked at a company called Boomtown. You guys probably know who Boomtown is. It's the uh, one of the best softwares out there. And I was their executive uh, uh, salesperson for the entire East Coast. And I would go into teams that have been around for three decades and brokerages and, uh, and people that had hundreds of agents in their office. And I would teach them how to take leads and actually get results from it. You know, there's a lot of lead sources out there, a lot of negativity around leads. And the number one thing that stops people is the rejection, the uncomfortableness in the, in the opening moments. And that's exactly what I focused on mastering, because if we can open up the initial conversation and we can get it off to a great start in any lead source, everything's going to unfold in a much smoother fashion. And Going back to the goal of prospecting, if we want to get the most amount of sales in the least amount of time with the least amount of effort, we have to master the opening part of the conversation. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about. Today, I've got essentially three bullet points for you. Okay, Three bullet points that if we if we walk away from this and we take this, it's, it's the exact same systems and, and, and processes and habits that I use to consistently do that. And I'm going to give you uh, a few different bullet points. One, we're going to talk about how to get in the right space uh, so that we feel good about what we're doing. Deion Sanders once said, if you look good, you feel good. If you feel good, you play good. If you play good, you get paid good. And in real estate, it's if we feel good, we'll sell more. And if we sell more, we'll get paid more. Okay. And part of our job is to get into the right headspace so that we attract the most business. I'll talk to you in depth about that. The second thing we're going to talk about is how to show up consistently and practice our active listening. 
Okay. And I'm going to give you some tools that you can take to the bank that'll help you speed up your learning curve. So that if you're dedicated to getting this skill set and unlocking your real potential, whether it's becoming an agent that sells two homes a month, four homes a month, building a team, opening up your own office, this is going to be the foundation that'll completely change the course of your real estate career if you can focus on mastering this process. It's done it for me. It'll do it for you. And it's just going to take some time. I'm going to give you some tools there. Third thing that we're going to cover is we're going to cover how to deliver value by solving the client's problems, helping them have breakthroughs, helping them recognize that there's a problem and forming the appointment, go, going for the appointment, asking for the order in the form of a value delivered statement that'll incentivize them to meet with us and take the next steps. Okay, the number one goal that we always have anytime we're walking into a call, whether it's a cancel and expired, a FISBO, open house, whatever it is, we wanna take that initial interaction with a motivated or qualified buyer or seller, and we want to turn it into a value statement of why they should at least meet with us so that we can share how we're going to solve all their problems and make their life better. And then as we become expert problem solvers and value deliverers, we get more money. I don't know about you guys, but I'd rather do one listing at three and a half than two listings at 1.75, right? So that's what we're going to cover today. And then by the end of the training... Um, I'm going to give out some additional value in regards to, uh, I've got some scripts, I've got some systems, I've got some PDF documents of how to set up your system, the products you can use, I can use all that. I'm going to, I'm going to send that all out to you guys. So for anybody who's in this list, you'll get an email in the next 72 hours. That's all about everything that we covered as well as PDFs and the scripts. So you can take it away for the people that are looking to, to develop better skill sets in the conversational points. I built this training for you and you will walk away with some actionable items. All right. So first and foremost, okay. And, and I'm not going to get into this like mindset thing where, you know, it's like, it's not a hoorah pump up thing. I'm just going to share with, with you what I have. Cause here's the analogy, building a business that's profitable and is consistently bringing in income and, and, and where you're spending money on leads or you're spending time working leads it's very similar to, to a cross country road trip in like the 1980s when there was no GPS. Okay. We want, we have a destination where we want to go. Okay. We want to get more business. We want to get more sales. We want to have better conversations. We have heard uh, a little bit of the directions here. Maybe we've got our, our, our Thomas guide. Is that what it's called? It was, a, it was a Thomas guide, right? Uh, we have our map and along the way, we're going to run into stumbling blocks and we're going to run into to, to issues. Our car is going to have issues. The ability to convert calls from cold calls to warm calls is like upgrading your engine, okay? Rather than have an engine inside of this beautiful car, you know, it's a seven series. We like leather. We like, you know, those, those back massagers in there, you know, the AC seats, you know, we're realtors. We like, we like a little bit of a flashy car. So we're successful allegedly, right? And, and we have this engine that's like a four cylinder and it gets seven miles to the gallon. And that is our engine, the conversational point. So, what I need you guys to understand is that it's a process. You can't just go from the Ferrari. You can't just go from the four cylinder to the Ferrari engine, because in order to be a master mechanic, you got to work on on engines, right? And in order to get the best results, you got to consistently upgrade the engine. That's what we're going to do with today. We're going to start with the foundation, and it all starts with how we show up. I don't know about you guys, but I want to attract really positive, awesome clients that just love and value me. They're like, this guy's awesome. He's funny. He's smart. He's saving me time. Yeah, he's worth it. I want to work with him and I want to refer my friends to him. Okay. And that does not come from um, just showing up randomly. It's an intentional thing because here's the thing. Nobody loves working with a negative Nancy. Anybody really want to work with a Karen? Not me. Karen. We want to work with positive people. We want to work with successful people. They want a real estate agent to get stuff done, especially on listings, right? This is their most important asset. They want somebody that's high energy. They want somebody that's going to make sure that every little detail is handled. They want somebody on the ball. And in order to do that, you got to live that. Okay, so some of the tools, and I'm going to go right to the tools because you have to have a strong mindset because you're going to get people left and right that say, you sound like somebody else. I always love that one. You sound like every other agent. And there's a couple of things we can do to correct that. We'll get to that later. But the point of it is, is that we have to show up in our best self. And that comes from a few different things. The first thing that I'll tell you about prospecting and about turning cold calls into warm calls that most people don't talk about. I had to cut out alcohol at night. 
I noticed that even if I had two or three drinks, I wouldn't sleep as well. I wouldn't be, uh, I wouldn't wake up as positive. I had to, I had to figure out, okay, if I'm prospecting Monday through Saturday, then that means I can drink on Saturday night. Cause even those two or three drinks, it's literally a depressant poison. And I'm not here to talk about sobriety. We're salespeople. Every now and then we need a double gin and tonic, right? Make it a triple. We are in sales. We've dealt with those clients, right? Sometimes we just need to blow off some steam. We've all had that problem client that finally closed and we're like, I'm getting drunk on that guy's money. It's happening right now, right? And so for me, the number one thing that I can do to, to focus on getting more motivated is I, I can drink less. And here's what I've experienced after going after, I've, I've done a year and a half no drinking, I've done six months no drinking, five months. And don't get me wrong, I'm going to Mexico, nine days. I don't know if there's a single time I won't have two drinks in my hands. I don't know, it's a resort. But when I'm focused on business, I don't drink. And I don't drink for an extended period of time. And here's what I found because- the, the, the challenge of our mindset being tough and, and resilient and going through comes from practice and repetition, but it also comes from our, our mindset and our energy. And if you eliminate alcohol, even for, for a week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, you'll immediately notice you start feeling better. You start getting more sleep. You start showing up a little bit more enthusiastic, a little more positive. And when I reach out to people in order to turn them from cold to warm, they got to feel the warmth. They got to feel the guy that's ready to take over the world. They got to feel the energy. Okay? And I'll give you the cold call as well when we get there. It's not about what we're saying right now. It's about how we're showing up. Okay. The number one thing I can do immediately is just get rid of that on my working days and focus on showing up on time and showing up in my best self. The second thing for me that's an anchor because prospecting in, in real estate is incredibly stressful if you let it be that way. I need some anchors to get some endorphins and some, and some physical outlet. It's there's a lot of toxicity in this business of a lot of frustration, a lot of stress. So I have I have my anchors. I play ice hockey three times a week. I, I got to be honest with you. I got Lend, it. Lender doesn't close on time. I got to talk to the client for 45 minutes on why the lender didn't do their job. I might just check somebody into the boards for fun. It's hockey. It's good. It feels good. And, and you know what? It's better than taking it on the client. I also work out three times a week at like F45 or 24 hour fitness, depending on what time of the year it is. And I use that to get rid of some of the stress, get into that, that positive area. It helps keep the weight off. It helps keep me more energetic. It releases endorphins. It keeps me positive. And no matter how bad of a, excuse me, no matter how bad of a day I'm having in the morning, if I get my ass to the gym, by the time I'm out, I'm like, ah. Oh got something good. I'm winning. I'm positive. I'm ready to go. And I do it early in the morning because prospecting starts at eight. Okay. And so there's, there's no alcohol. There's exercise. If we're in sales and you want to make more sales and you want to prospect more, you need more energy. It is a challenge to go from speaking on the phone for 15 minutes to speaking on the phone for an hour, two, three hours, whatever it may be. And that's indicative of what your goals are based on the amount of time you got to work. You can start, if you're not doing anything, start with 15, start with 30, build yourself up, but focus on the areas you can get more energy, working out, phenomenal way to get more energy, okay, eating less, less garbage, you definitely are single, right, no kids, no, I've got two kids, I've got two kids, seven and nine, and my son, who's seven, plays traveling hockey, and I coach the team, I am way too busy, way too busy, I'm 2,313 days no alcohol, keep going, that's awesome, that's incredible. And I bet you have way better mornings than 90% of the people that drink six drinks at night. So with that being said, yeah, I look young. I'm almost 40, which is still just a baby, right? I haven't even reached my prime yet. Um, when it comes to when it comes to these things, like these things often get overlooked, but there is an absolute direct correlation from the time that you start focusing on your health and your energy. Because again, when I show up, here's the cold call. It doesn't matter what whether I'm talking to prospecting. Um, I'm talking to uh, FISBOs, expireds, canceled, referrals, fear of influence, internet leads, networking, no matter what it is, I'm following this same formula, okay? Number one, I'm starting out with familiarity. And I want the familiarity to be like a friend like that I haven't seen in years. Hey, John, John, what's up, John? Hey, John, hey, Josh. Like I've been talking and I want that energy. So I want to lift their energy up right away. I want to be associated with that good, positive feeling. We've all been around somebody that's just electric and you can't help but feel better. It's really hard to yell at somebody that's making you feel good in the belly. Right? Okay, and so you reach out and you say, hey, John, you pause. 
They're thinking to themselves, what am I going to, who's this, who's this, who's this? Josh Pono. And I say it as if I'm one of the best agents in my market. I say it as if I, if I'm like this powerful attorney, I say it as if I know what I'm doing. I say it as if they should know me. Of course you should know me. I don't know how I feel about John. So of course they should know me. Of course, I, I, I help people exactly like you. Of course you don't should know me. Big deal. Got many leather bound books. My apartment smells of rich mahogany. And last but not least, that was an Anchorman reference for the, for the salespeople out there that like movies. And last but not least, I say, good morning. And I say, good morning. I don't say, how are you? Because how are you as salesy? And I work in real estate. So even if you're depressed about the current situation and why you have to sell the house, I'm still going to be there with you to nurture you and hold you in your emotional moments. It's part of the commission. I still want to work with you. So it's irrelevant. It's salesy and it raises their guard. And so I come in and I say, hey, John. Josh Pono, good morning. And they get caught off guard because their parents, most likely, or somebody around them said, hey, if somebody says good morning, you say good morning back. And so they say, uh, good morning, how are you? And I say, oh, I'm doing lovely. Somewhere between fantastic and phenomenal, but it's early. It's 8.01. I don't know. I'll tell you soon. How are you? That whole dynamic shifts. It's not a salesperson. It's a friend. I'm a friend. I'm going to help you and, and save you money and, and time and energy. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you to the end of the finish line. I'm your best friend in real estate. Every now and then you get a negative answer. Like, do you know me? No, this is an introductory call. I'm calling about 123 Main Street. Okay. And so the energy that we deliver and how we show up in that moment matters. They want to work with somebody exciting. They want to work with somebody that's disciplined. They want to work with somebody that knows what they're doing. And just that routine, it's like this subconscious understanding. If you're, if you're somebody who's waking up early, working out, watching what you eat, getting to bed early, cutting out the alcohol, focusing on your business, you just speak differently. You just have a different perspective. And they want something different because they just suffered through problems, right? If they're a cancel and expire, they're physical, they're going through problems. If they've been making offers and not getting the offers accepted, they need something different. And most agents in those negative situations, I don't know about you, have you ever had a listing that you accidentally overpriced and now you got nothing and then they're expecting it to be sold in two weeks and you call them up and you've got nothing? It's not like we reach out to them like, what's up, John? Hey, what's up, Josh? Any, any update? Yeah, yeah, I got an update. Nothing has happened. Absolute shit. I'm baffled. I don't know what's going on. But how's your day going, right? Nobody does that, right? We're like, well, you know, here's the thing. Da, 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 right, right. Like we try to make so be different, and your it all starts with your energy. And it all starts with your mindset. I can't help you, but you have to have the habits. And by the way, I've tried to fight these a million ways over. I cannot tell you how many times I've been a little baby storming around, pissed off that I hate waking up early. I hate doing this. I hate doing that. I hate doing this. Why can't I just be happy without these things? Oh, so I got to work to be happy. That's fantastic. Got more work. I've been there. And every time I fall off track, I go right back to my habits. And within weeks, I'm like, all right, who wants some? Who wants some? I do. Okay. How we show up is so important. It's so important. And what'll happen is, your mindset will be great. Let me give you an example. When I was at Z57, I was setting some records on some sales guys and I uh, on some sales and 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 I was the I at 24 I was that bravado, brash, hard closing, I'm going to get shit done type of sales guy and I wanted to I I always knew I wanted to uh, build a big real estate business. So like I knew that if I was going to elevate my game, if I was going to be better off than than my competitors, I had to get really good at management. And I knew jack about management and coaching. I knew nothing. And so I went into coaching and I went into management and I started killing it and crushing it. And the human behavioral development manager, the guy that really twisted and tweaked the sales processes and, and really studied the ins and outs and how to refine the system. He came up to me one day. He's like, how are you crushing it, killing it? I said, listen, I just make salespeople feel good about themselves. They walk by. I'm like, what's up, legend? You closing deals today? We're going to make some money. Dominate Tuesdays. Let's go. Right. I just make them feel good because even if your skill set doesn't change, you give me two salespeople. I get one high on life, ready to rock and roll, ready to accomplish their dreams in there. Why working out, showing up on time, skipping alcohol. And I get one that's like a little bit better in sales and skills, but not doing all that stuff. You feel better. You'll sell better. Plain and simple. You could have zero increase in your skill. You show up six out of seven days. 
ready to rock and roll, ready to take over the world, you will sell more. You will attract more opportunity. You'll land in into it more. Okay, which brings us to the next part. And by the way, I'm still I still battle with this stuff. Okay, so when you go to make these implements and these changes, and you go to put these in there, and for some we haven't worked out in a long time, we haven't woke woken up in a long time, we stay up late, all that stuff. I get it, and it's going to take time for your body to adjust. Side note, little real little uh, little hack. I used to work. I used to wake up every morning at five a.m. and then Saturday and Sunday, I'd st- uh, Friday night and Saturday night, I'd stay up till two, three. I do all these things that that I couldn't do during the week, and then I'd sleep in because it was the weekend. Here's a hack, and I hate this hack, but it works. <laughs> if we our bodies are designed to regulate consistency, right? We lo- our bodies like consistency. So if your schedule, if you're having trouble, you're like, ah, oh, I've been trying for years to wake up early. I did too. If you're trying to wake up early. And Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays, it's just really, really hard to get out of bed. Here's a couple of hacks. One, wake up the same time every day. It'll program it pretty quickly. I'm I'm lucky because my son literally has hockey games every other weekend at 6 a.m. where I got to get up at 4.30 to get to the rink at 5 to get like, so that helps on Saturday and Sunday. But I found something that, you know, really worked. But keep it consistent every single day. It'll feel good soon. The pain will be worth the reward. The other thing is I put my phone every single night in the other room, in my office, on the charger. So I had to get my ass out of bed, walk through the hallway, and go there. Got to do it. Hack number three for waking up early, drink a big glass of water right away. Your body is dehydrated. Your body is, is eh, like it's not, it's like running on, on partial power. The moment you get a big glass of water, all the organs, everything starts lighting up and you'll feel that bit of a switch to go hmm, i'm getting there and if you fall off the horse just just say no big deal the process taking me years to do it and it's well worth it and more and more it's easier to get back into the habits okay now all right let's assume that we're feeling good let's assume we're we're working our new systems let's assume we're cutting out some habits let's assume we're we're battling through that to get really efficient at that now we've got to have the right tools to show up and practice the right way Okay, because in order to turn a, a warm call, a cold call into a warm call, you have to be on your toes, right? Because they're going to throw zingers at you and you've got to deal with them in real time. Not interested. Bring me a buyer. We took it off the market. We're not selling it. We hate real estate agents. They're going to send everything your way. Okay. And in order to develop the skill set, you need to practice and fail. In order to develop the skill set, you need to practice and fail. And it takes time on task over time. And it takes repetition. It's a Gary Keller line, time on task over time, right? I've made hundreds of thousands of phone calls by necessity and then by intention and design. And what I've learned is that, you know, it's just like sports. It's just like where you try something new. It's not going to work right away. And you're going to try it and try it and try it and try it and try it. And then one day it's just going to click. Okay, so here's a few things that you can do to expedite your learning curve so that when you show up, you're practicing correctly and you've got your active listening going because that's the key to everything. Actively listening. So often we're so excited about we've got our script and that's if we're excited about the script. Most And we'll talk about that in a second. But, you know, we got our script. We got our leads. We're all excited. We're going to get on the phone. We're going to make it happen. We're going to be consistent. Okay, we get on the phone. And the whole time we're talking, we're thinking about where we're going to go next, or we're hoping that they're going to like it. And then they respond, and we're not listening to them to see if we can solve their problems. We're listening to them to see if we can say the next line that sounds cool so we don't look bad. At least that's what I did for a long time, right? Right? We're, we're, we're so out of practice. We need to be in a space where we're professionals that know how to deal that deal with all of that. So that when they say, hey, not interested, bring me a buyer, you say, hey, absolutely not a problem. So you still would sell the property, wouldn't you? And the key is to just not be caught off guard because if you're caught off guard, they're going to subconsciously think you're bad at what you do. They did not make it difficult for you, right? And so when we're, we're, we're showing up, we want the repetition, but we also need some tools. One of the biggest mistakes I see agents make is they hop in and I'm in all these, all these groups, by the way, I'm in the take 52 Vulcan seven group. I'm in the Mojo mastermind. I'm in the lab code. I'm in this and this. I have trouble staying in there 
because you'll get people that throw out, hey, I got this objection. What should I do? And I have like 34 questions I want to ask so that I can give them the most relevant in the experience, in the moment experienced answer. And what happens is we are rookies in that moment. We go to a broad audience that nobody knows. We can't verify not whether they're good. We don't know what their skill set is. They don't know where we're at. They have no idea of what the context was before it. And they just throw out this random advice. And then they and then salespeople take that random advice and then they go try it. And they're like, oh, that shit didn't work. Maybe I did it wrong. I don't know. Maybe I. So they go back and it just regurgitates and regurgitates and regurgitates. One of the coolest tools that you can get with any sales dialer, Mojo. So Mojo's a damn Netflix. Mojo. Um, Vulcan seven land voice, red X prospect boss. These are all dialers and all of them have a call recording feature. Mojo's 25 extra bucks a month to have a call recording feature. Professional athletes, they record their practices, they record their games and they review them. One of the things that I do with my agents to help speed up their success is we listen to their calls. Okay, because what happens is we're doing a lot of self-diagnosis. My friend, who I was getting very close to beating in golf, one of my mentors, he's extremely competitive, kind of an asshole, but he's got a big heart. He cares a lot and he loves to beat me and we love to compete. He's big brother. I'm little brother. And I was getting close to him in golf. So you know what he did for Christmas? He bought me a how to like a coaching book on how to correct your self-correct your swing. You know what happened? My handicap went way up. My, I, he ruined the game of golf for me. Like I don't even want to play anymore because I got in my head and I start coaching myself. And all of a sudden I got a slice. I never had a slice in my entire life. I got a slice. I can't get rid of. And he laughed and giggled. He goes, I honestly was hoping you were going to get better, but I knew there was a, a chance that you would self-destruct. And then I would win all the time. So I gave the gift and I, I let you be in control. I was like, he's son of a bitch. Got me. The point of it is, when we go to other people and we go to people that have no idea or understanding where we're at in our professional development, they have, and, and by the way, sometimes we're taking advice from somebody that's just bored. I put a post off uh, in Facebook the other day. It was asking a very specific question. I had financial advisors giving me real estate advice. Like they were giving me advice. I was like, what the, are they even talking about? And I opened them up and I'm like, this is a finance, right? On these social profiles in these groups, you get people that are just bored. You get people that are depressed. You get people that are all kinds of shit. Okay, so the number one thing you can do is record your calls and then take those calls to somebody who is an expert at the process. Could be a top producer in your office, could be your mentor, could be your coach, could be anybody and say, hey, I really want to break these calls down. Surreal can tell you for a fact, your mind will be blown when you record calls. I had an agent in my office come to me and he was like, hey, this is the most incredible call ever. I crushed it. They love me. It was great. I was like, cool, let's listen to it. <laughs> let's listen to it. We went back and we listened to it. The prospect was actually mocking the agent. And I heard it and I was like, oh, that's that's an interesting tonality here, huh? Oh, what do you think about it? And he was like, holy smokes. This guy was making fun of me. And I said, let's rewind the tape. Here's where it went wrong. Here's where you lost him. And, and then we played. You could hear the tonality. So now the next time he goes into the call and he hears that same thing, he's got the plan. Ah, I remember this. All right, here's where I go. Hey, okay? when we practice, we want to practice. You know, they say practice makes perfect. And then they come out and they say perfect practice makes perfect. <laughs> in, in our sales game, and this is something I learned back at my Z57 website training days when I was in coaching and management. We never took on a sales rep or developed a sales rep without listening to their calls. Because when you go to somebody and you give them the scenario, they give you the advice and then you go, I said that, I said exactly that. And they're like, well, I don't know. And so you're never actually working on this real problem. When you show up to practice, and you show and you have the right tools to record and you have the right people around you that have a little bit more experience, then you can actually work on things. And then it comes into the play of the goal of any type of prospecting, right? We go back to the goal of prospecting, right? If I'm a seller, right? There's scripts, right? If I'm a seller, I want the most amount of money for my house and the least amount of uh, on, on my timeline with the least amount of stress. That's what I want. If I'm a buyer, I want the best house at the best price 
with the least amount of stress on my timeline. That's what I want. If I'm an, a real estate agent, I want the most amount of new clients with the highest amount of commission with the least amount of prospecting. Shoot, I don't even really want a prospect. I just want a phone that rings with deals. Let's be real. The reason why everybody loves referral business and referral business is the best, which I agree, is because the phone rings like, what's up, Josh? I'm selling my home. Come on over. We'll have a drink. And then we'll sign the listing paperwork. What's your commission? Whatever you want. When we prospect, right? When we prospect, it's a whole nother scenario, right? When we prospect, it's a whole nother scenario. So I know why most people hate prospecting is because their, their damn contact ratio is so freaking high that the pain is not worth the reward. You got to make 400 dials just to get one, one relatively good conversation. My best month ever with outbound prospecting was 19 taken appointments in one month. I had a 19 to one call to, it's called an open ratio. Okay, your call to open ratio, just so you know, is how many calls does it take you to get a, an appointment? Okay, most agents are in a couple hundred. Holy shit. If I had to prospect 20 times as much as I do now, yeah, I'd hate it too. I did hate it. I did. And just so you guys know, I was really good and then I sucked for a really long time. When I went to the Z57 and I was cold calling, I never really wanted a cold call. I just had to. It was 2009. I had no job. My dad had fired me because he's an old fashioned, crazy Italian that believes in verbal abuse and mental, mental abuse. And we would get hired and fired because I was a sarcastic as shit teenager and loved to get under his skin. And so finally, I needed another job. I got this job at Z57 at websites. I was call cold calling in 2009 and 10. I needed to pay my bills and it was tough. It was tough and I would get smashed constantly. It was tough. But we we learn from those mistakes. And I was the first one in the class to, to sell. And then I got arrogant and I got confident and I got off script. And then I didn't sell for three months and I just got smashed. So you're going to go through your ups and downs. It's okay. The goal is to get really good, to generate <laughs> your business, to sell homes, because once you once you learn that 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 ability, you can go anywhere. You really can. I'm living it right now with the office. I'm building my whole business exactly the way I want, and it all comes from around teaching agents how to sell and selling myself. So let's just assume, for this moment, we are working on some habits. We're implementing some new things. We're getting more energy. We're getting healthier, which also feels great, right? Feels great. Pants start feeling different. Shirts start feeling different brushing our teeth we we turn to the side a little bit oh, like like in uh that 70s show welcome to kelso town new muscle okay we're doing better there we're showing up we've got we've got support around us and we're active listening here's where it all comes together people have heard me say cancel and expired listings are by far the best leads on the entire planet to work and i say that for a few different reasons one Autopilot. Every day there's 10 to 15 listings that expire in my market that half of them relist right away. They come in through the system. I, I open them up. I call them. I don't have to think about it. They just show up. I work the leads. I'm done once I hit the new ones and I move on. Okay. The second thing is that in order to succeed, and this is where we roll into the third point, bullet point, in order to succeed with cancel and expires, you have to be extremely, uh, you have to be extremely aware, aware and diligent to find the problems that went wrong because your prospects are going to lie to you. Property didn't sell. Ah, it's no, it's, there was nothing wrong. Nothing wrong at all. Yeah, we didn't really want to sell it. We listed it. You know, we figured we were bored, right? We, we were bored. We we're like, hey, why not move? You know, we love packing. We love moving. We love uprooting our kids. We love doing all these things. And it didn't sell, but we didn't really want it to sell. Oh, the agent, fantastic. No, we, we picked the price. We, we, yeah, we know we were a hundred thousand dollars over. We picked the price. We thought it'd be funny. We, right. They're going to give you these lines that are completely like BS, right? Nobody does that, but they give you these lines to say everything was fine. And it's our job to go, huh, that's weird. Quick question. And we want to find the active listening will cue us in to finding the problems that they experience to illuminate them so that they go, Oh, smokes. That's not right. Let me give you an example. I was on the phone call with a with a, a, a potential seller lead. It's a cancel expire lead, and his property was on the market for four months. He, uh, we got on the phone. Hey, what's going on? Oh yeah, it's fine. It's fine. My agent's awesome. It's great. There's no problem. I'm not really interested in relisting it. Here's what happened. 
you know, we listed the home, we got the home sold. We got it's not even a problem to sell it. Thing sells itself. It's great. It's awesome. It's incredible. Best home ever. And we didn't, we, we found a replacement home, but then we realized, you know, it was too much money. And so we realized with these interest rates, you know, nothing can be done, right? Interest rates, blah, 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 interest rates. So everything's fine. Agent's great. I was like, huh, that's interesting. So let me get this straight. Just so I'm clear. You listed your home, you got it sold. You then found the perfect home and you got it. You were about to secure it. Then the lender at that point says, hey, by the way, 3% interest rate and 7% interest rates makes a little bit difference in your payment. And then they show you the payment and you have shell shot. You, you get dropped in a bucket of water. You're like, holy shit, I can't do that. So then you cancel the listing. And next time you're going to probably go through the same type of process to figure it out. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. So quick question for you, because I'm, I'm confused. Quick question for you. When you guys did the listing presentation, the real estate agent brought you, he said, hey, this is what it's going to sell for. And here's a net seller sheet with all your costs so that you knew exactly what you were walking away with. Then he took that number and took it to your preferred lender and said, hey, run the numbers with this down payment at this interest rate and everything. Find the monthly payment. And then they found the monthly payment. And then they took the listings of everything that's sold in the last 30 days because you're buying a replacement property. So they took your area, your criteria, they did everything. And they, they sent you a list of all the homes that sold in the last 30 days. And then they had you go through that list to see if what you wanted and what your expectations and your budget, it all aligned. And then they even maybe sent you a few active properties that, that you got excited about and you went and toured them just to double check that you were that fired up so that if you go through this process, you actually succeed and get to where you want to go, right? They did that, of course, right? Well, no. No, we just listed it and we sold it and, and gotcha. Do you know why agents don't do that process, sir? Why? Because 70% of the time I go through that exercise with my clients, you know what the answer is right now? Josh, I'm not selling. I can't do it with these rates. So what you're telling me is that because your agent skipped some steps, you spent four months trying to sell a house and search for a home and go here and go there and fight traffic and listen to the buyers come into your property and bad mouth and maybe get an offer and go through the new. You went through all that for four months to find out at the very last second that you, that you wasted 30, 40, 50, 60 hours, hundreds of thousands of dollars in gas and time and energy. Holy shit, you're right. Do you think that that's the type of service or experience that you would want every single time? Or if I could show you a way to ensure that you never made a real estate move that wasn't 90% possible, aligning all the details from get-go so you could make the best decision for you and your family, is that something you would value next time? Right? And so what happens with cancel and expires, what I love is they put massive pressure on you as an agent to find the problems. And guess what? As entrepreneurs, all we do is find problems and solve them. You got a problem? I can solve that. You got a problem? I can solve that. Then we then we get so good at solving everybody else's problems that other agents come up to us and they're like, hey, how'd you sell those 30 homes? Oh, what's your problem? Well, my problem is I can only sell five. I can solve that problem. All we do as entrepreneurs is we find a problem, we solve it. Cancel and expires, there's always a problem. My favorite thing is when they're like, Josh, nothing's wrong. I'm like, clearly not. You're talking to me. I'm the guy that, that talks to you when there's problems. How'd you get up on my expired list? And I, I, I say that in jest and, you know, there's a, a way to say that and we can do other trainings on conversion and cold calls and all that stuff. But if you're going to turn calls into warm calls, you got to be really good at active listening and getting to the point. Okay. The script that we talked about earlier is going to open them up. We start with familiarity, keeps their guard down. We come in with authority, perks their attention. We give them some personality. Good morning. They then respond, and it's our job to find that pain as quickly as possible. Okay, one of the, one of the tips, by the way, of how to turn those cold calls into warm calls, you got to be really good. This is, this is a little, little gem that has made me a lot of money is that's exactly why I'm calling. It works for so many things. Give an example. Not, nah, it didn't sell. We're taking it off the market. We're not interested in speaking to real estate agents. Hey, thanks for sharing that. That's exactly why I'm calling. Yeah, that's the exact reason I'm calling. Hey, quick question. I noticed 123 Main Street didn't sell. Looks fantastic. What's the story? The key is, 
Whatever they throw you, you kind of just do one of these. Oh, that's nice. Quick question. You just let it go right by you. The only way you get there is practice and repetition and showing up. The only way you get there is by getting punched in the face. That fist is coming and it's like, like 38,000 times. And then finally like, oh, if I just drop my knee right here, my body twists and then he goes through there and it's fine, right? You have to learn that. You have to learn that. When we're in the conversation, as long as you handle it like you've done this a million times and it's, and the only way you can handle it like you've done it a million times is you show up with energy, you show up with excitement, you actively listen to them and you provide solutions to their problems. Wow, it sounds like you're experiencing X, Y, and Z. If I could take, if I could show you a system or if I could teach you a solution that would eliminate problems A, B, and C and ensure that you get goal X, Y, and Z, is that something that you would find of value? Yes. Yes, that would be valuable. Fantastic. That is awesome. The next time we speak, the next time we speak. Okay, a couple, uh, a couple little hacks, by the way. Um, a couple little hacks on this stuff. You know, I talked about the the exactly why we meet. And by the way, it, it literally works for everything. I've had some really aggressive people that will literally say, um, you know, hey, Josh, just so you know, I'm so sick and tired of these agents. They're calling nonstop. Where were they when my house was listed? You know, and I just I'm not speaking to a salesman at all. Totally get it after what you've been through. I would be there, too. And that's exactly why I'm calling. <laughs> and you just take whatever they're giving you and say, yeah, that's the reason I'm calling. They don't know what to do with it. We've got scripts. They've got scripts. Their scripts, they're even less practiced than we are. They don't, they don't know what to do. They're like, I know one line of the script. And that's why they come back and they go, not interested, not interested, because they're they have nothing less to say. All right. So that's exactly why we're calling. If you guys, if you guys put into this is and, and this is me speaking to me. I don't want to, I don't want to should or you guys or or, or whatever. Anytime I fall off track, and that's the hard part about doing this consistently. That's why, that's why, you know, you, you see like the, <laughs> what about cold call and pre-closures? I'll get to that in one minute. Thank you. Um, <laughs> that's why like you'll be out and about and you'll be talking to somebody. And they're like shaking their whiskey glass. And they're like, I used to be in sales. <laughs> it's because it's a grind and it's a long-term thing. And, and, you know, that, that's what I was, I was, and I always think about when people tell me like, I used to be in sales and I'm always like, well, what happened? Right. Uh, why would you ever leave sales if you were great at it? I mean, it's, it's literally one of the best professions if you're in the right industry, which real estate is. And, and so, you know, when it comes to, um, when it comes to staying on track, that's where the hard part is because we have so many distractions and we have so much emotional energy pulling us in every single which way. And we wear so many damn hats and we, we carry so much emotion from the clients. It's hard to, it's hard to, it's hard to get rid of. Right. And so when, when you, when you focus on, and I fall off track, right. And then here's what I do. I go, cool. I'm off track. I got to get results, alcohol, working out food, waking up early, prospecting 8 a.m. Easiest time to protect, by the way. 8 a.m. is one of the easiest times of prospecting to protect. I've tried five, six, seven at night, you know, blah, 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 blah. Weekends early and mornings early, you're good. Okay, I go to those things right away. I go to my anchors. I focus on that. I give myself grace when I'm not all there and just say tomorrow will be better. Mamba mentality, every day get better, 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 better. And when I go into the call, I just focus on being the most positive I can possibly be. Because if they're laughing, you know, hey, 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 John, Josh Pono, good morning. Oh, <laughs> hello. How are you? Oh, I'm doing lovely, beautiful outside. Oh, God, I couldn't complain. You wouldn't listen. How are you? If you're laughing, you can't really be mad at me. And even if they come back and say, what's this about? I'm calling about one, two, three Main Street. Go serious. I listen. I mirror. I move forward. 
and I actively listen. And the number one thing I'm trying to find is how do I deliver value in the form of solving a problem that I know is exists that exists with them, and I can move forward. Okay. In conclusion, if you focus on how you feel, if you focus on putting good habits in there, that'll absolutely bring you more energy and more positivity in your life. If you focus on showing up and practicing and putting the time in to get really good at the curveballs that come your way so that you handle them like a pro. If you focus on finding solutions to their problems and offering it in the form of, if I could help you, would you then? Great. That's exactly why we need to meet. You will have more success and it won't just be on your outbound prospecting. These skills will help you in all types of different business relationships with team members, with recruiting, with everything. I mean, it's, it's literally a foundational piece to every successful real estate business. Somebody somewhere knows how to sell and knows how to solve problems pretty quickly. And I'm not talking about, you know, we sold 10, 50. I'm talking the bigger businesses. Like most of these guys, they have great sales systems or they have great training. Does anybody have, uh, uh, if anybody would be uh, kind enough, any any shares, any ahas, any final thoughts, any questions? All right, let's knock out some questions. You're welcome. Uh, what about cold calling pre-foreclosures? Um, here's the deal. Here's my opinion on leads. Like, like you need to commit to three three pillars. For me, it's, it's sphere of influence, right? Referrals are the best business. Um, we work our sphere to make, uh, we work our other pillars to make our sphere bigger. So one day we can let go of pillars, wherever our goals are. I use internet leads, realtor.com. They're phenomenal. Um, if you know, if you know how to, to apply the same formula we're talking about today. Um, and I also use cancel and expire. Those are my three pillars. And so pre foreclosures, um, it's just a little bit of a different conversation. Same thing with probates, right? Probate is a, a similar, a similar type of lots of phone calls. Cancel and expire is all about being the successful agent that's going to get shit done and move things forward and, and confident. Probate is all about mm, what a difficult time. I'm here for you. I can help you with the best resources. I know how to navigate this process. While you're emotionally overwhelmed, I am the clear guiding light that keeps you focused. So the real estate part is not, not an issue. I take care of everything for you. You just hang out with your friends, right? That's it. You, you just deal with that stuff. Pre foreclosures. Hey, I'm here to help you on a short timeline. Like it's, a, but it's the same cold call. Yeah, Helen, cold recording your cold calls and and working with somebody specifically on those, it's going to open your eyes. We all think we're great salespeople. I personally think I'm a I'm a good salesperson. That that it's a, I got to sharpen up. I got to keep getting better. I got to keep getting better because nothing pisses me off more than having a great lead. And I mess up from a fundamental or a technical standpoint. I don't find the right pain. I know there's pain there. I can't get to it. And it slips through my fingers. That pisses me off. Call recording will show us where the abundance of opportunity is. It's around us every single day. Every single lead source you've ever called, there's abundance of opportunity. The lead list that I recommend. Um, so our system specifically that we run is the exact same system. We do Mojo. I'm sorry, we do Vulcan Data. Vulcan data is the most expensive cancel and expired data by far. Uh, everybody, all the competitors, Red X, Volk, uh, Land Voice, um, Prospect Boss, Mojo, they're all about 50 to 100 bucks and uh, per month. Expireds, expireds are 300 with Vulcan. They're 300 with Vulcan. And so what I've experienced after testing and running these trials, because every, every single month I pay, I'm like, man, I wish there was like the same solution for a fraction of the cost. And I've tried these other solutions. And here's what I found that they have less quantity of leads. They don't catch every single one. Vulcan consistently outproduces it. And number two, the, quanti the quality of the phone numbers, the quality of the phone numbers is more accurate. It feels like 85% and they quote like 85 or 90. It feels like they're accurate. 85% are accurate. The other ones, and it's like if I'm gonna if I'm gonna spend hours a month prospecting a solution, I want the most amount of leads with the best kind of quality because the cost per lead is 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 silly. Realtor.com, I pay hundred dollars a lead for. Vulcan gets us three hundred and fifty leads, so they're less than a dollar a lead. So I don't really care about that. I care about quality. Then we have all those leads dropped through Zapier. Zapier is a uh, I'm sorry, not through Zapier. Um, they have an uh, an API that goes from. 
Vulcan to Mojo. I use Mojo because it has a triple line dialer. Vulcan only has a single line dialer. The triple line dialer speeds up the efficiency. Again, prospecting more, getting higher con higher conversation rates. And Mojo is phenomenal with the sorting of the data. So like with Vulcan, you got to log in, you got to do this, you got to look work this expired list and you work this Vulcan, uh, the, this canceled list and, and you can't really segment it that well. With Mojo, I can say, give me every canceled and expired every single day in one bucket, all of them dumping into both types of leads, dumping into one bucket, give me, eliminate everything less than 200,000, give me everything up to 2 million and give me in this, like I can literally segment it. When we have buyers, looking for a $700,000 property in Santee, we can say, give me every single cancel and expire from Santee for the last few years. And the other thing cool about Vulcan, unlike everyone else, is I can say, give me the last three years of Vulcan of expired data so I can get older leads. And in our system right now, we probably have 11,000 leads because I've been doing this since, I've been working cancel and expired 